Hey guys, are you interested in learning how to paint your Max vs. Minion plastic miniatures? Well, you're in luck because this video is my 5 minute painting guide showing you on how to make your miniatures look totally awesome. Once again, I'm your host Severian here on this gamer channel. I've broken down painting miniatures into six simple steps so that you too can paint miniatures even if you haven't done so before. Step number one, gather your supplies. Specifically, you'll want to make sure that you have the right paints, paint brushes, and a pot of water to wash your brushes with. A comfortable, well-lit painting area with an appropriate painting surface is crucial. And you'll also want to make sure that you have gloves, spray paint for a primer coat, as well as a mask or a well-ventilated area to spray paint in. Step number two, choose a color scheme. Before painting, try to envision what you want your awesome miniatures to look like. For example, you can choose to go with the League of Legends in-game color scheme. Uh, if you're going to go with custom ones, color wheels can be really helpful in choosing a color scheme because choosing colors opposite of your main color on the wheel will tend to naturally complement your main color. As a general rule of thumb, don't use more than three major colors in your miniatures or it'll end up looking a little bit messy, but hey, remember, it's your miniature, so feel free to use your imagination. Step number three, prime your models. Priming models is really easy, but also important. Regular paint sticks onto other paints, but doesn't stick onto plastic surface as well, unlike primer. However, primers lack the level of color that most painters seek. If you were to paint with regular paint on the plastic, it would just flake off or chip off really easily and damaging the hard work that you put into your model. When priming, it's much quicker to use a spray paint. Try to aim the spray paint at least 12 to 18 inches away from the target. Otherwise, too much paint ends up on the surface of the model and you lose some of that amazing detail on the model because it's just covered in too thick a layer of primer spray paint. Step number four, add a base coat. Once you've chosen your color scheme, you can add your first coat of paint over your primer. Remember that you won't be adding details just yet. Start with the hardest to reach part of the model first and paint a thin coat with the base color of that part. Continue painting the parts with the correct color from the most difficult to the largest least difficult parts of the miniature. For the majority of this step, you will be using a size 1 or size 0 paintbrush, and please do not worry about being messy at this point in time. You will likely end up having to repaint over your mistakes no matter how experienced you are. For this project, I'm using the Citadel paints made by Games Workshop, but any set of acrylic paints will do. I am specifically using three different blues with brown, black, white, yellow, green, and silver as my highlight colors. So after adding your base coat, this is what my models look like, and at this point in time I've spent approximately five minutes per model painting them. And I want to mention that for the majority of players, your models will be completely playable. However, if you're a perfectionist painter like myself, like I can't stand this little brown part that's on the silver part of the shield, then you'll be wanting to take care of that in step number five, adding details through dry brushing and washing. Now, it's during this step when you will be painting over your earlier mistakes. There are two ways that you'll be doing this, and it doesn't matter which order that you do them in. Let's start with washes. Washes, for those of you who are not familiar with them, are just really watery paint. In this project, I use a brown, black, and blue wash. To add more detail to this shield, I want to use a black wash because the watery nature of a wash will run into all the crevices. This creates the illusion of depth for the viewer. When you're done, it will look something like this and hide that brown spot from earlier. Now, dry brushing does the opposite. It adds highlights and should be used for lighter colors to make the objects that are painted appear closer. In order to dry brush, you'll want to load your paintbrush with just a small amount of paint and then wipe it on a piece of paper until it's almost dry, then apply it to the surface of your choice. Notice the light ice blue highlights to this model. I've also painted the lower parts of the cloak so that you can start seeing some of the texture. Now you can actually mix and match dry brushing and washing until you get that perfect effect. For example, let's focus on the bottom of this model's cloak. This model has had a dark blue base coat with the blue wash followed by two different colors of dry brushing on it. 
I should also mention that it's also okay to add highlights by regular painting. For example, I added a bronze trim to this model's shield. Finally, this is also the time that you'll want to add any small personal effects to your models to make them your own. For example, I absolutely love the minion who's cowering behind his shield. He's just so scared. It's, it's so flavorful. Um, and I, I just thought a tear would be a natural effect, so I added that to this model as well. And finally, step number six, adding a varnish. So what a varnish does is, is it's a protective coating for your model. Keep in mind, it will make it a little bit more shinier, so it can change the color a little bit. And make sure you only apply a varnish after you're completely done painting your model. Although it's a little bit annoying that you can't repaint any of the surfaces after you applied the varnish. It does protect it from scratches and wear and tear that occurs during the normal usage and play of the game. So once again, this has been your host, Severi, and I hope that you found this painting guide helpful. If any viewers out there have any pictures of their cool color schemes, I would love to be able to share your work through a follow-up YouTube video, because maybe you too can inspire another painter to this great hobby. My email will be listed in the comments below. Thank you so very much.